are the Evergreens? Welcome to Brussels. So we're here in Brussels. It's the capital of Belgium and Brussels is known for many things. A few of those being some of our favorite things. Fries, waffles, chocolate, and beer. How can you go wrong? So we figured the best way to show you guys what Brussels has to offer in 48 hours is to go on a food tour. So let's get to the eating. To the waffles. So there are two kinds of waffles that are famous here. There's the Brussels, which are rectangular in shape, and they're crispy on the outside, fluffy on the inside. These ones are the liege waffles. They're a little bit more round. They're compact, dense, and I guess sweeter. So these ones you don't need any toppings on because they're sweet enough. This one has chocolate shoved inside of it though. So this one's vanilla, this one's chocolate. All right, so I'm gonna try this vanilla one first. You just pressed it, so it's gonna be good. Oh yeah, it's the perfect amount of sweetness and there's just like a nice like sugar coating on the outside which gives it that nice crunch on the inside. It's doughy but dense. Okay, so mine has the chocolate inside and they actually like insert these long sticks of chocolate right into the middle of the waffle. So it should be all melted in there now. It's gonna be so good. So good, the, the chocolate's like slightly melted, but not completely. It's very like sugary and crystallized on the outside, and then it's very dense, kind of squishy. I love how they warm it right before they give it to you though, it's so yeah. good. Oh yeah, it's amazing. in Brussels city center. As you can see, this place is buzzing with energy today because it is their labor day. So that's why there's tons of street performers, tons of entertainment going on, a lot of people here. But this city square is known all around the world for its rich appearance and neoclassical and Gothic style buildings. It was built back in the 11th century, but many of the original buildings were destroyed in 1695 when the French bombarded this area. So it was rebuilt again after that. And it gives it a very unique look because you have the clash of different styles of architecture. It's absolutely stunning here and many people actually say it's the most beautiful city square in all of the world. So we got our fries and if you don't know, Fries were invented in Belgium, so this is a very exciting moment. The special thing about their fries is they're twice fried, so I think they're gonna be unlike any other fries we've had. So we got a bunch of dipping sauces. As you can see, they have like 10 to 12 to choose from. You do have to pay extra for the dipping sauces, but it's really fun because we're like sauce people. So we love that. I think this is curry ketchup. You have to go with the traditional mayo. This is a hot mushroom cream one. Yes. And, and then this is the Andalise. Yep. I'm going to do the Andalise first. Okay. Let me try. I'm gonna go traditional and go with the mayo. Oh yeah. If you go to a good free stand, they wait to fry it the second time until you place your order. So it comes out hot and fresh and as you can see they're like perfectly golden brown, crispy on the outside, soft on the inside, what you want from a good fry. And the sauces, like they'd be fine without a sauce, but definitely elevates it and takes it to the next level. It's a good time. The mushroom one, it's like a mix between like gravy and mushroom soup, but really, really good. I think that's my favorite. Mm -hmm. So the Belgian fries usually come in these cones too. So you could like walk through the streets and eat them or have a sit down, whatever you prefer. This might be the happiest pigeon around walking around finding loose fries. He's living the dream. Those fries were slightly life-changing. Yeah. 
Definitely. And it was only 350 euro for that entire cone. The condiments were a little pricey though. They were anywhere from one euro to two euro per sauce, but it's part of the experience. I love in Brussels how the main foods are all kind of street foods. So you can just like pick them up as you walk around and snack your it. way through Brussels. Yeah. That's our kind of day. Hey, look, same picture and everything. Look at that. So next we're going to show you the main event of Brussels, the biggest attraction here. Drum roll please. <laughs> Mannequin piss. It's literally just a statue of a boy peeing into a fountain. Mannequin Pitch translates to the peeing boy. So there's many theories of why Mannequin Piss is such a big deal here. One of those is that it's honoring a boy who once saved Brussels by defusing a bomb by peeing on it. He also has many different outfits, I think over a thousand, and they keep them in different museums throughout the city. So they dress him up for different occasions, which I'm kind of confused because he's not dressed up today for Labor Day, but He's um, in his birthday suit. In his birthday suit. But they do love mannequin piss here a lot. Every chocolate shop pretty much that you pass, unless it's like a really fancy one, they have little chocolates shaped like mannequin piss. He is a big deal here. They celebrate him, they love him. So while in Brussels, you have to get a little photo with mannequin piss. So what do you say? Let's go get a selfie. Let's do it. Oh my gosh, we're laughing so hard. There's corkscrews of mannequin piss and little statues. They're literally everywhere. Snow globe? You must be cold. <laughs> hey. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so we just found the perfect example of how big of a deal this is, but um, yeah, check out these pastries over here. They're not suitable for audiences under 18. So we came to a place right across the street from the Mannequin Piss statue. We got two beers to try. Mine is the Quack beer, and as you can see, it comes in this neat little wooden holder. In Belgium, every beer has its own glass that it's poured into to enhance the flavor, and this one specifically comes in this crazy looking glass. And they say that they give you this wooden holder so it doesn't tip over as easily on the table and make a mess. So why don't we cheers and you can give it a try. Slide it out. Do you just drink it in there? You drink it with the handle. The handle. The handle? No? Maybe? Go ahead. Give it a try. Really good. It's an amber ale. And yeah, it's just really nice. Okay, so I want one of the Chevet Green, which is one of their most popular Trappist beers. So the Trappist beers are brewed by monks in the monastery, which is really cool. I've had this, um, this brewery before back home. It's quite expensive back home and it's really affordable here, but I've never tried the green one, so I decided to try. But if you're wondering why Belgian beer is so different and why people talk about it so much, it all comes down to the yeast that they use. So Belgian yeast has a more floral, sweet taste to it, different than the crisp, bitter taste that you get in other beers. So let's give this baby a try. It's really good. Just tastes like a nice blonde Belgian. All done. All done. <laughs> a little local chocolatier, Elizabeth's. We made a friend who shared with us some things that make Belgian chocolate so special. The unique thing that you have in Belgian chocolate is that we work with different flavors. I mean, you have chocolate with chili, you have chocolate with jasmine, and we are so into dark chocolate. That's why you have to try it. Awesome, and we got some goodies to try. The one I was most curious about trying was the Earl Grey. I think it's like an Earl Grey ganache. Mm, smells delicious, so yeah, give it a try. 
That's fantastic. You mostly taste the dark chocolate and the chocolate ganache inside, but then there's just like this after taste of Earl Grey. Very delicious. These were more expensive, so a little fancy one. Treat yourself. <laughs> Okay, that's good. I can tell. Europeans know how to do chocolate. Oh my gosh. It sort of has a gummy consistency. I think you'll like this one. Oh my gosh. That's fantastic. Yes. I think we need to go back in and get some more. Yeah, I want to take some of those home. It's so good. So this one, he said, was one of his favorites. I think it has hazelnut, ganache, and some kind of sugar on the outside. Oh yeah. We're happy. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think it's safe to say that we're loving Brussels. We still have four more, but I think we'll save them for later. I think we found mannequin pieces, citizen. A meter of beer, oh my gosh. All right guys, we had to trust more Belgian beers because we're here and they're known for their beers. So we came to Delirium Village. They're actually in the Guinness Book of World Records for having the most amount of beers on tap. This place is crazy. It occupies like an entire alley. There's different buildings that you could walk into. It's all connected, but you can choose. Each room has like a little bit of a different vibe. And we ordered a meter of beer. It's 10 flights, but these pours, they're quite large. <laughs> So yeah, I was very... not expecting that. No, and they just pick the beers for you. So we're gonna try some Belgian beers here. Point to your favorite. It's a winner. Brussels this morning. We're heading to Bruges. We're so excited. We hope you enjoyed this little video with our food tour of Brussels. We're going to be trying a lot more Belgian food in Bruges. So if you don't want to miss that, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like this video, leave us a comment, and we'll see you there. Just you and me, I need to go somewhere